Hey, this is Lee Waller. Today I'm going to take a look at Cinema 4D Lite. Cinema 4D Lite is a program that is bundled with Adobe After Effects. Now, there are a few tricks to working in Cinema 4D Lite. First of all, you need to know that it's tied to Adobe After Effects, and so you're going to have to work through Adobe After Effects to get to it. So, to begin with this, I'm going to start a new composition. And the same settings that I'm going to use here for this composition, I'll need to use also in Cinema 4D Lite. So I'm going to go with HDTV, 1080, 24 frames, 10 seconds. I'm going to hit OK on that. Later when we want to work in this project, we're going to need to open up After Effects to get to Cinema 4D Lite. So it's best that we go ahead and save this After Effects project. And now we can add a Cinema 4D file to this composition. To do that, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. Click on that, and we're going to need to save this project. And it's best to save this where you saved your After Effects file. And now Cinema 4D Lite is going to open up. Now that Cinema 4D Lite is open, let's take a look at the user interface. Before we start, I am going to go ahead and drop in a cube. This button right up here is going to place a cube in our 3D viewer. This will help us understand the workspace a little bit better. The cube's in the 3D viewer, and you can see that we have an X and a Y and a Z value. To move this space around, we have four controls that we can use. Up here in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see those controls. The first one is a move tool and it moves the entire space around. It's not moving the cube. The next one is a zoom in and zoom out tool. The next is a rotation tool. The fourth tool allows us to look at the scene from different perspectives, different views, but they're 2D views. You'll see that my cube is here in the perspective view. We have a top, right, and front view. So this view here, we're looking down on the cube. This view, we're looking at the right side of the cube, and then this one, of course, is the front. We can get to any of these views by clicking on the icon, and it brings us to that view. So if I want to see the top down, I can jump back into the four views, then click on that button, and there is our top-down view. To return back, I'll click on it again, and then go back to my perspective view. Those controls there only move the view. To move the objects, in the viewer, we'll come to these controls right here. This control, again, is a move tool, so I can select it. You notice that I can come into the viewer, click, and I'm moving the object that is selected. I'm moving that object around. Same for the next tool, which is the scale tool. Click on it, and I can scale that up or down. And then the next one is a rotation tool. This first tool here is if I have several objects and I want to select them, I can use that tool to select those objects. As I'm working in the project, if I want to reset my view, there are a number of drop-down menus right here. The first one, View, I can come to it and select Frame Default. And so now I'm back to my default view of the 3D viewer. Let's take a look at these three icons right here. This first one, we're going to use it quite a bit because it will render the view. This is an unrendered view at the moment. So I click on that button, and now that is the rendered view of what we have in the scene at the moment. The next one is another way to render this, but it will render it to a picture viewer. And you can see the scene there. This is handy if you want to do an A-B comparison. So I can render this out close it, come back to the project, and if I want to move this, just to do it, another comparison, I can click on Render to Picture Viewer, and now there are my two options. So I can do an A-B comparison of those. This button right here opens up our render settings. You can see that we have adjusted those render settings to match our After Effects project, and there are more options here that we'll take a look at later. Our next set of buttons help us create the scene and the objects in the scene. As you saw earlier, we clicked on the cube and it placed a cube in the scene. If we click down and hold on that button, you'll see that there are a number of different objects that we can drop into the scene. These are parametric 
or primitive objects. The next button opens up the spline tool and a number of preset splines that we can use. These are lines that are drawn and then you'll use an extrude to make them into an object. I'm going to jump over and there is our extrude tool along with lathe, loft, sweep, and vectorizer. These all help us take these splines and make them into shapes. Then I'm going to jump down to the bend tool which will take our parametric objects and then we can bend or twist whatever the deformer is that you choose. You can deform those parametric objects. The next three help us set up our scene. Click on the floor and then there's a number of objects that we can place that helps us build the scene. The next is the camera tool and we can drop a camera in here and animate it to move through the scene. And then the next tool is the light tool that helps us to light the scene. The next two panels I want to take a look at will be the object and the attribute panels. These two panels to the far right. The first panel is our object panel. And just like we have the cube in the 3D viewer, we have a cube in our objects panel. Any object that we place in the 3D viewer, it will show up here in the objects panel. So if I add another cylinder to this. That cylinder is in there and you will see that now we have that object in the objects tab. When we select on that object, the attributes for that object are now available to us in the attributes panel. I have the cube selected and those are the properties available to us in the attributes panel. You'll see that the size X, Y, and Z are available to us so I can increase the size, decrease the size, reshape this parametric object, this cube, based on these values here. Each object will have its own set of properties and they will differ from other objects. Some will be similar. I can select fill it here and you'll see that that puts an edge on this cube. I'm going to select the cylinder and you'll notice that the object properties, the attributes for this one are different. There's radius. I can increase the radius of that cylinder, the height of it. I'm going to select the cylinder and delete it for right now. I'm going to come down here to this bottom section, which is the animation panel. Here is our timeline for the project. Right now it is showing only 72 frames or three seconds of this project. We originally set it up for 10 seconds. This bar right here will allow us to scrub through the entire project 10 seconds, or we can expand it to see the entire 10 seconds of the project. To the right of that, we have all of our play controls where we can play the project or we can move one frame at a time or we can jump to the next keyframe. I'm going to demonstrate very quickly how to animate this object. I'm going to select the object and I'm going to work with the coordinates here, X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to move this cube over to the left using the X coordinates. And I'm going to set the first keyframe here at the very beginning of the timeline. To do that, I'm going to click this button right here next to the X coordinate. And now I'm going to move forward in my timeline. And now I'm going to move this cube to the right and select that keyframe again. And now I have two keyframes. I can jump back to the beginning of the timeline and play that. And there is my animation. I'll take a more in-depth look at animation and keyframes in a later tutorial. The last panel I want to look at is right below our animation panel. And this is our materials panel. Any material that we add to the scene to an object will show up in this panel. I'm going to quickly create a new material and add it to our cube. So I'm going to go to create new material. Here's our first new material. I can double click on this and here's our material editor. I'm just going to quickly change the color of it. And now I'm going to drop that onto our cube. I'm going to render this frame very quickly. And that's what our cube looks like. 
Before I finish this quick overview, I want to jump back to After Effects so we can take a look at a few other things we need to adjust. We come back to After Effects and this is our Cinema 4D Lite file right here. You'll notice that the cube is not there. Also, our Cinema 4D Lite layer down here is still only three seconds long and not expanded to the full 10 seconds. So I'm gonna jump back to Cinema 4D Lite. Anytime you've made a change to your Cinema 4D Lite project and you want to see it in After Effects, you're going to need to save it. So I'm gonna hit Control S, that saves any changes that I've made. And now I'll jump back to After Effects. And now you see the changes are updated. One other issue that we're having is that in After Effects, it's rendering out at a low quality setting. We can change that. Over here in our Effects panel, you will see the Cineware Effects Controls. This is added anytime that you add a Cinema 4D Lite file to the project. In the Cineware plugin, there is a renderer settings. Right now it is set to software. We can come to it and click on standard final. Now it's rendering at the full quality. You can use After Effects to create a RAM preview of the work that you've done.